New York's classic rock, Q1043. Temperature in New York City is 32 on our way to 41 today. So we had real nice weather to welcome uh, Tom Papa <gasps> to town. It's so great to welcome you. Well, to welcome you back, although yeah. it's a different location than we were at before. I'm very happy to see your faces. Uh, it's nice to have you here, yeah. but, but, but we were hoping you would bring sourdough bread. Oh. Uh. You know, you got to tip me off. <laughs> but I, that's I you probably you could have done all it. About it. I know. Well, I yeah. On and on and on. It, I'm on a long trip, so it would have been hard to fit it into the yeah, carry-on. But, is, but, but is the original strain still alive in your refrigerator? Yes, yes, that's it crazy. is. Yeah, and I just had to leave home for. I'm, I'm going to be out for about a. It's called 10 a days. starter, right? A starter, it's a called... mother. Okay, but but that's all right there, the Look original. In a mason the jar in the refrigerator, Yeah, cool. waiting for me to come home. Cool. I've been on the road so much that uh, my wife texted me and said, uh, did you move out and not tell me? <laughs> and I was like, no, but uh, can you feed my starter for me <laughs> while I'm away? What does it eat? Uh, flour and water. Equal parts. Mm -hmm. You have to feed it. Mm -hmm. And if you well, don't... Well, it's a living thing. Feed, of course wait, you have to feed, feed it. Feed yeah. it how often? Um, it, when it's in the refrigerator, about every week to 10 days. Huh. And uh, if it's out, you have to feed it every day. And it's it's an active thing. And if it then it starts to eat itself. And Sounds like a alcohol. blob. It well, is a blob. It's alive. <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> yeah, it's alive. <laughs> yes. And it's they have personalities. Blob. One's really bubbly. <laughs> one's a little cranky. And I just make it all the time. And this is how I uh, this is how I know whether or not uh, I'm home or not. Mm -hmm. If I can bake a lot of bread, so I would have brought it. I you could have. I'll take care of you. I am always coming through New York. Aw, you're so I, I'll sweet. I'll do it. Well, I'll you, do it. Well, you know, obviously we're going to shamelessly plug your new Netflix special. Uh, yeah. But. 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 Mm -hmm. I did a little research this morning. Now, oh boy. The the at last count there are. 8,145,641 podcasts, and Whoa. that's just from the state of Vermont alone, <laughs> where every single man, woman, and child <laughs> has 9.3 podcasts personally. Yeah. Uh, and they have an average audience of four. <laughs> um, and so my question to you is yeah how did yours get to be so successful because the fact of the matter is because i have done some research your podcasts occasionally draw audiences that are larger than some network tv shows for real for real wow um, I don't know. I guess um, just being really charming, having using my sexy radio voice from time to time. I don't know. I think I just, uh, honestly, and you guys know this, if you just do something because you like doing it, mm -hmm. and you don't, I have no idea what the numbers are. I have no clue if anyone's listening. I just love sitting down with people and breaking bread with them and having these conversations and i just truly love it well maybe it helps that you've been on with joe rogan a lot and he plugs your podcast yeah that's that, that would help th that helps establish it for yeah. sure yeah. and it, it is it is interesting that like i'm going around touring um promoting this new special and all of the major stuff are like my friends you guys people that my friends who have podcasts tom segura and um pete holmes and burke right like Everybody just who has these successful podcasts, they've become literally, you don't even think about, why would I go on late night? You know, those audiences are so small. But they are now. They, they are. are yeah. it's, it's, you know, you yeah. know, it was, I mean, and this is not in any way meant to disparage Trevor Noah, who no. retired Love last Trevor. week and who, you know, is a very successful performer. But you know the the Daily Show's audience had dwindled down to like almost nothing. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is crazy. Like to know that the Tonight Show is under a million people. I know is really, and then you can go on Rogan, and it's eight million people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, easy. It really has changed. It's 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 kind of crazy. So I don't know. I think as far as my own, it's my job just to make stuff and put it out, and that's and if people find it and they're into it, great. If they don't, I'm still doing it. It doesn't really matter. And uh, it's the same with my stand-up. It's the same with my 
radio stuff, my books. All yeah, that well, stuff. you know, like you're you're one of what you've got more than one radio show, right? I mean, one yeah. is called uh, What a Joke, which is good. That's on Sirius XM. Yeah, that's a good one. And Breaking Bread with Tom Papa, we understand that. That's the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's. I mean, you've got good titles. Well, that's good. You, you do. You know, titles are important because mm-hmm. it helps you remember stuff. I mean, come to Papa. Yeah. I mean, who can forget that? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm actually doing that tomorrow night at uh, at the uh, Comedy Cellar, if people want to come to that. We do the big Christmas show. And uh, Mateo Lane's on it and Dave Hill and uh, Judy Gold, Mike Yard, all these people. And we do that all the time. And that Come to Papa was the original sitcom that I did that got canceled after six episodes. And I was like, I can't let this name. But it still lives in another way, right? I was like, I can't let this name just go away. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah, so that's when I started the the radio show. We mentioned his podcast. It's Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. Now, with that, I mean, we know of your love of sourdough bread, but it's not just a podcast about bread. It's you and your friends getting together, having some food, Drinking a little, yeah, and just having a nice conversation about whatever. What what do you drink? Yeah, it's uh, well, it depends on the guest. It's I I thought we'd be drinking wine every show, uh huh. And uh, I've had a bottle of wine on the set now for probably three months. Nobody, everybody, no one likes to day drink when they're out huh. doing press. It's so weird. I thought everybody you have would. to invite me to be on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, <someday. right>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could have a good time. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Uh, but everyone's like, I'll just take some water. So you I, know, j- I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't take water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Later on in the day. Yeah, water doesn't work. <laughs> so tell us about the new Netflix special, which will be released tomorrow. Yeah, my, uh, my newest Netflix special. It's called What a Day, uh, which is... Uh, what I just kind of say when I walk into the kitchen every day. It's not even a, a joke in this special. I just, when I'm around my kids and stuff and my wife, I'm just always coming in like, what a day, what a day. And uh, it occurred to me, it's pretty funny that it starts off, what a day, pretty optimistic in the morning. And by like, you know, six o'clock when we're rolling around to dinner, it's, oh, what a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the tone of the whole special. You know, it's, my stuff is a little less cynical, a little more hopeful, uh-huh. but also a little real. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's, yeah, what a day. Or, what a day. <laughs> it's amazing how it depends how you say it. That's yeah. right. right. I shot it in Boston uh, in October at the Wilbur Theater, and uh, it came out pretty great. And they, we So you just did it. Yeah, we just did it. It was originally going to be coming out in, like, January, February, but they were so into it, they moved it up. Hmm. So it's coming out... Uh, I feel like it's a good time, right? Everyone's mm-hmm. home, drinking, smoking. It's holiday but time. But did you holiday know time. that was going to be the one? Because that puts pressure on you when you're there doing it, right? No, uh, yeah, no, I didn't know. You mean when I was filming, when yes. it would come out? No, I figured it would be first quarter, but then... But uh, I think, I think. do you film more than one? Uh, I film two in a night. Okay. Two in a night. This is the way you always do it. You film two. And then uh, one becomes like the one that everybody likes, and then the other one used for parts, like used parts, and edit it in. And every time I do it, I always think, oh, it was definitely the first one. And then everyone around me is like, oh, the second one, right? <laughs> like, oh, wait a minute. I thought the other one was okay. And uh, so you, But by the time you get into the edit, it all kind of evens out somewhat. And when you're doing two shows, are, are the shows I would imagine mm-hmm. when you're – doing a television special the shows if not identical are very close very close to identical. i don't yeah by the time you're I, i'm not doing crowd work you know it's pretty dialed in and you know i toured this pretty heavy for two years and by the time it, we did it i knew exactly what i'm doing exactly what where, where the jokes are i'm not changing the order i'm just i want the whole objective in these things is to make the live shows are so fun and you want to make that as normal as possible that night. Even though there's cameras around, you just want to capture what you've been doing when you've been touring. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, you know, you got to kind of fake it a little bit when you see like a camera come across your face. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you can kind of shut it, I mean, this is the fifth one I've done. So do the audiences find it exciting that they're at a performance that's being turned into a special? They do, which is always a little bit of a uh, wild card because some people can get too excited. 
and they they drink and then they show up and they want to be a part of it and they think they're supporting you by yelling out in the middle of your joke papa we love you <laughs> okay thank you but this is going to be on netflix <laughs> you're the best and okay okay so thank they're you. loving you but that could throw the whole pacing off yeah and you do it in boston with alcohol you know that's a real roll of the dice but everybody was really great you know and it's one of my favorite comedy places there's a pop to that to that city okay and yeah. then your performances while you're here in new york yep i'm doing uh come to papa tomorrow night at the village underground that's my big holiday show and um and that's it and then this will be kind of my last week and then i'm going to be uh eating cookies and drinking and baking and staying at home what's your favorite christmas tradition with the family Oh man, I'm big into Christmas. I'm really it's the big thing is on uh on Christmas Eve I do the Italian feast of the seven oh, fishes. The oh, I seven love fishes. That. Yeah, I do that every Christmas Eve. There's a, a restaurant here, uh uh the uh, Scotto's restaurant, Fresco. Uh-huh. Where I mean you have to make a reservation like three years in advance <laughs> Probably, for the night yeah. of seven yeah. fishes on, on uh Christmas Eve. It's pretty it's great. So much cooking. Yeah, it's a lot of cooking, but it's but it's fun cooking. It's and you can also cheat it. It's like, you know, if you have some lox, that counts mm. as a fish. If you have a co shrimp cocktail, that's Here, a fish. Have some anchovies. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I cheat it. And then linguine with clam sauce and then you throw all that other stuff out and, <laughs> and bake and yeah. I okay, like that. Okay, so that's Christmas Eve. Yeah. That's Christmas Eve. That's a big one. I, I, is your family a Christmas Eve gift opening family or a Christmas morning? Christmas gift morning. Christmas morning is the uh is the presents. No Christmas Eve gifts. Some people do that. I know, I know. Those people are called sinners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we wait. We wait for the day. Do it on the day, and then uh, there's this Christmas Christmas wreath thing that my wife's mother would make every year. And my wife, because I bake so much, is like, "Will you create that?" And it's like a cinnamon roll that you don't cut into pieces. It's like a cinnamon roll put into a wreath and you just kind of slice it. Oh, that sounds beautiful. And put some, like, glaze on top oh, of it. Awesome. And yummy. But it's, it's really great, but it's you only make it once a year. Yeah, but there are few things in life as yeah. good as a cinnamon roll. I know. And this is, like, six-foot-long oh. cinnamon roll rolled into a wreath. Oh, boy. Yeah, so if you can book a flight <laughs> and you can hold off by opening your present till Christmas morning, you can come over. Wow. I mean, that sounds awesome. Was that your uh, mother-in-law's invention? No. It's, uh, it's a... I don't know where it comes from. It could be like a Lancaster kind of holdover, like, you know, from the Germans that came over. It's like that kind of a thing. Why didn't my husband know about that? Because uh, he doesn't love you as much as I do. <laughs> we want pics. I'll send pics. Yeah, yeah, I'll send yeah. pics. I mean, really, that sounds awesome. It I'd, does. I'd like a picture of that yeah. to yeah. put on social media. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a little high pressure because people are opening pre we are opening the presents in the other room, and I've got to get over and tend to the wreath. Could you imagine the aroma? Mm. Mm -hmm. That is the big, the biggest thing about baking. Like I bake bread. Like when I'm home, it's usually about four loaves a week. Like you know, two separate days, and uh, just having f baked, fresh baked bread kind of wafting through the house. Oh, it's one of the best meals yeah. ever. Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, I'm sure my daughters have something to complain about, but I feel like that should cancel out a lot of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dad's goofy and embarrasses me in the in the. But his bread. But his bread. <laughs> to, to die for. <laughs> yeah, Tom, Papa, you have seized control of my brain because I can't even read properly now. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, I mean, I'm 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 thinking about you know he's he's done some movies, you know, and I and, and I'm thinking of the Stephen Sourdough film. <laughs> <laughs> because my eyeballs were seeing. I mean, you did a Soderbergh. Yeah, yeah. I've done. I've worked with Soderbergh a bunch. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did the informant, and I did uh, an olive loaf, 
and I did a uh, I did a uh, cheddar jalapeno. But I mean, when I looked out at I looked out at the paper and I saw Stephen Sourdough. That's what my brain said. You yeah, seized control yeah. of my brain with the thought of all we, this great food yeah. and all the wonderful smells and all of that. And I'm supposed to be promoting a Netflix special by a famous comedian, and all I'm thinking about is cinnamon rolls. I and know sourdough bread. Well, back to what your first question: wine. why? <laughs> why why is my podcast popular? <laughs> you answered your own question. All right. Well, Tom Papa, uh, and any more books in the work? Yes. I'll come back and see you all in uh, June. My next book, uh, we're all in this together, so make some room, is uh, the pre-sale actually just went up, and uh, that next book will be coming out in June. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Tom Papa, what a – Tom Papa – what a day. What a what day. What a, what a day. What a day. What a day. <laughs> what, a day. what a day. What a day. <laughs> uh, that's tomorrow on Netflix. Thanks for coming by, as always. We'll always great to see you. Yeah, yeah, Merry likewise. Christmas. Merry Christmas yeah. to you oh, all. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. He sounds Merry like the Christmas. green giant when he does that, right? You really I'm do. You sound like Santa, and <laughs> you, you keep telling me I sound giant. like the green giant. <laughs> that's so funny. I, yeah, I never realized they were so close. You know, the green guy and the red guy. Yeah, from the valley of the... <laughs> Ho, 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 ho. See? <laughs> Green right. giant. Okay. Santa Claus. <laughs> 8.30 in the morning. Tom Papa, thank you so much. New York's classic rock. Q1043.